Hi everybody, I'm Chris Scrat Whittleton with Organizing Maniacs, where we help clients challenged by brain-based conditions like ADD, ADHD, OCD, and hoarding tendencies to be more organized through uh, simplified systems. And um, welcome to our book club. This month we are reading The Gentle Art of Swedish Death Cleaning by Margarita Manninson. I think I hope I didn't mispronounce that uh, this was a this was a fun tiny little book and uh, if you loved uh, Marie Kondo's um, the magic of tidying up you are gonna probably like this book just as much I accepted that it was much shorter and probably much funner she has a really fun sense of humor I found myself totally cracking up sometimes when uh, when I was reading it what she said um, but in uh, in Sweden, uh, apparently there is a um, common practice that people start purging their stuff at the age of 65 in preparation to leaving this planet a better place for their loved ones and going through the process of enjoying the decluttering process um, of downsizing so it's not completely overwhelming. Uh, she talks about it in the book how it can take it can take a year and I totally agree with that I think if you are going to organize a home that you have lived in a, for a real long time it's gonna take you a substantial amount of time to sort through every cranny every nook and cranny and every drawer and every closet and every piece of furniture sometimes it doesn't seem like it will take that long but as you start opening drawers and you start sorting through stuff and you start establishing what you want to keep what you want to get rid of who do you want to hand down some of this stuff for? It's it's definitely a very lengthy process. So in the book she talks about that, how you know you don't want to leave it for less minute and you don't want to leave it for you know people to deal with your stuff because they may not know what that stuff means to you. Um, you should start early. And the suggested age range is 65. <laughs> However, I think that um, I think we should do this more often. And I was thinking like maybe every decade, you know, like every um, every decade when you have a major milestone it'll be good to kind of like make an assessment of your life so make an assessment of your stuff like do you still need all of the things that you want and need i don't necessarily think that you should spend an entire year every decade kind of sorting through your life however um maybe you can spend a few months just kind of reevaluating what are some of the things you have um, and how you know how are they important to you or where are you you know where are you going moving forward is your situation still the same or can you just get rid of these things so this is a great um, a great little book um, but let's see what some of my notes said um, so basically the book kind of goes through the process of getting rid of your stuff and she just kind of outlines the you know the steps that she took as she was going through it um, I love it that she says don't start with memorabilia and I 100% agree with that I think when people are starting to get organized they always think like oh uh, I'll go organize my photos or I'll go organize my kids school stuff and eh, that's like the worst place to start right start with the things that are obviously maybe discards like we all have an area of our house that we you know we put things I'll put it here for now and then I'll come back and deal with it well you know dealing with it may take years so go to those areas and start there um, it's gonna be so much easier for you to go to one of those areas let's say your basement or your storage room or your garage and then easily identify these things that could be thrown away and then just kind of get rid of them you're gonna feel really good about the process you're gonna be super excited that you got rid of stuff you're gonna you know you're gonna have an immediate um, visual results because you're gonna see the space getting cleared up and what happens when you feel good about what you're doing you're so much more likely to continue doing it right? so don't start with anything that's really difficult for you and for you it may not be memorabilia it may be paperwork it may be you know um, I don't know maybe your closet it may be you may maybe your kitchen like don't start with anything that's super difficult establish an area that is very easy for you to start with and then start tackling that area so I loved that she said that um, she, so I already think that you know in, in the whole idea of like 
death planning or death cleaning, right? Because I, I think that this book kind of opens the opportunity for a conversation that is a little bit deeper. And the fact that death and taxes are the only certain in our lives, right? We're all going to that get to that point. And how do you prepare for it in a way that's meaningful to you and meaningful to your loved ones? We're already doing that, right? We're doing, we're preparing wills and we're having, we have medical directives prepared. Some people plan their funerals. We, you know, we leave our, uh, we're leaving our digital footprints to somebody so they can take care of that. So why not plan our stuff as well in a way that is like meaningful, that it doesn't have to just become clutter to other people. So I really, I really love that she was doing that. Like, you know, don't wait until the very end to deal with the, with the junk and the clutter. Just start thinking about it, you know, like as soon as, as soon as you feel like, okay, I have too much, just start thinking about it and start getting rid of it. So that was pretty cool. Um, one really fun and interesting thing that she talked about in the book that I have mixed feelings about is like she really was into giving things to others and um, I always tell my clients like be very careful about that. We all want to find a really great place for our stuff to go and we don't want to, you know, we don't want to be, you know, adding to the landfill and we feel really guilty about the fact that we spend good money on these things and that somebody could use it. Well, Honestly, you should really make an evaluation because our friends may be completely overwhelmed by their own stuff already and now you're going to be handing them things that they no longer want or need that have absolutely no meaning to you and no value to them. So be very careful about doing that. And uh, one thing I always tell people is like if you're going to give them, if you are going to give somebody something, right, make sure that you're like, just be very clear like, hey, I'm giving you this pen and I'm giving you this pen because I have absolutely no need for it and I'm having a hard time getting rid of it, but I'm giving it to you and you can do whatever you want with it. You can keep it, you can give it to somebody else, you can throw it away, I don't care. I'm detaching myself from the emotion of this pen by giving it to you and, I let, and I, I'm gonna let you make whatever decision you feel is appropriate for this pen. So that way if they get that pen from you, they're not like, oh my God, you know, Chris gave me that pen and, and she thinks I'm so special and I'm gonna have to hang on to this pen forever, but the pen is like broken down, doesn't have any ink and looks terrible and it doesn't even feel good in your hands, right? So those are all things that you don't wanna make your, your friends feel very guilty about. So be very, very uh, conscious of that. Uh, she also talks about a buddy system, right? <laughs> she was like, oh, all of this decluttering is like exhausting and it took forever and it's physically uh, demanding of your body. So she talked about having a buddy system. She wasn't a big fan of professional organizers. However, I highly recommend them. So if you're feeling like you're struggling and you're stuck and you don't know where to go or what to do, or you know, just getting through these like little piles or rooms, it's just completely overwhelming. Maybe create like a co-op system with your, you know, with your next door neighbor or with your best friend or you know, somebody virtually and you can both FaceTime or video chat while you're decluttering at the same time. It's fun to like share stories and, and tell the absurdity of the things that we have kept. And honestly, I do that sometimes. I'm like, I can't believe I have this. So um, so it keeps you motivated, it makes it fun and interesting, and you know, two people get stuff done, so who doesn't like that? Uh, so, um, pretty much, pretty much a very simple book. It's, it's, it was, it was like a fun, qu quick read. Um, I am not going to put this book on the very, very top of my list of favorite books, but I felt like, you know, most of my clients are reading it and I felt like everybody probably were going to be talking about it and everybody is going to ask me, did you read that book? It was literally just published in January of 2018, so it's only been a few weeks, but in the New York Times and the Washington Post and I think the Wall Street Journal uh, all have written articles on it, so we're bound to see this book more and more over the next few uh, few months and maybe years. So, um, but like I said, it was a fun book. I think it, it touches on a lot of very important items, like don't wait until, the, you know, until you're, 
really, really old and physically unable to make decisions about your stuff before you, you can start thinking about it. Um, start enjoying your life today or tomorrow by just getting rid of things that, you know, don't really fit your lifestyle anymore. And even though, um, I, you know, we all probably thought Marie Kondo was a bit nutty with her, you know, this is spark joy conversation. However, I think she really had a really good point. If it doesn't spark joy, get rid of it. So um, on that note, um, it's an amazing February day here in Washington, D.C. in 2018. It's like 70 some degrees. So I'm gonna make this book club super short and I'm gonna go take myself on a bike ride. So I hope you're staying um, cool and decluttered and being productive with your life. And if you need any support or if you uh, like to read some of our blogs or if you want to subscribe to this awesome um, book club, you're welcome to find us at organizingmaniacs.com. Anyway, I'm Chris Grout-Wiedelton. I look forward to seeing you next month. Thanks and bye.